Mike Duffy sat silently as his criminal trial began today, breaking that silence only to tell the judge, I am not guilty, Your Honor. It is one of Parliament Hill's most highly anticipated trials, but it is not just about Duffy, not just about the Senate. It involves you, or more specifically, your money, and how much of it was spent by Duffy, rightly or wrongly, while he sat as a Conservative senator. He's charged with fraud, breach of trust, and bribery. In an unusual move, both the Crown and Defence laid out their cases today. We begin with the Crown and Rosemary Barton. Rosie. Peter, the Crown himself said today the case against Mike Duffy is simple. It comes down to what role does common sense play in Mike Duffy's expense claims. Mike Duffy's first battle was just trying to get into the courthouse in the first place. Duffy, how's your help today? Senator, Mr. Duffy, will you testify? But his legal fight also became clearer, with lead Crown prosecutor Mark Holmes setting out his case, first addressing Duffy's residency, saying Duffy's primary residence was clearly not in Prince Edward Island. In fact, Holmes went further, suggesting Duffy was probably ineligible to sit in the Senate at all. He was constitutionally eligible to have been appointed from the province of Ontario, but that is not what happened, Holmes told the court. Documents tabled today show that just days after being appointed in 2008, Duffy filed his first expense claim for a trip to his home on PEI, where he made sure to apply for a driver's license in the very province he was claiming was his primary residence. And the Crown says later cancelling his Ontario driver's license, which he had since 1971. But the Crown also spelled out more about the fraud it alleges around Duffy's expense claims that were personal or partisan. Like this one to Peterborough, where Duffy had a coffee with then Conservative MP Dean Del Mastro. The Crown alleges Duffy and his wife also bought a puppy, and the trip in effect became a shopping trip paid for by taxpayers. Another allegation that Senate business was not top of mind, according to the Crown, evident in Duffy's diaries table today, that show on September 5th of 2009, Duffy travels to see his daughter's play in British Columbia. The public event for the next day, a visit to the Saanich Fair with former MP Gary Lunn, ends up cancelled. But Duffy's diary does show a family dinner later that day. The Crown says for all of it, Duffy claimed $8,000. But the Crown also says he took other personal trips he charged to the Senate to visit his grandchildren and see his daughter after a planned C-section. Holmes then addressed Senate contracts that Duffy gave to a former colleague valued at $65,000. The Crown said they were nothing more than a clearinghouse, a reserve pool of money for expenses Duffy could not get through the Senate, a makeup artist, even a personal trainer. Holmes said Duffy had an obligation to exercise some restraint. And on that charge of bribery, the allegation that Duffy took $90,000 from the Prime Minister's former Chief of Staff, Nigel Wright, the Crown makes it clear Duffy wanted help. Senator Duffy was at least an equal partner in this arrangement, if not the instigator, says Holmes. One more thing the documents show, Peter. Mike Duffy's very first per diem claim here in Ottawa came just one day after he was appointed to the Senate by the Prime Minister, even though he wouldn't officially become a senator until days later. Peter. All right, Rosie, thank you. Rosemary Barton in Ottawa. Well.